Well, hi everyone. I thought it was time to do another Rapidam Dam update because there's been a lot of interesting developments. It's been 13 months since this dam washed out. More specifically, there was a failure due to overtopping at the left abutment of this dam. And now in that time period, they've demolished the existing Highway County 9 bridge. They plan to start building its replacement next year in 2026. They expect that replacement cost to be around $20 million. Recently, a consultant, Bar Engineering, gave a presentation to Blue Earth County officials about what it would cost to remove the damaged Rapidan Dam. And they came up with an estimated cost of around $88 million. Now, at the time of recording this video, I've posed some questions to the county engineer, Ryan Tilgus and uh, I'm going to give him time to get back, but when he does, I'll post any response that he has uh, as a comment, a uh, pinned comment to this video. But what I wanted to go over here today is just the overall implications uh, of the aftermath of this disaster, really, locally. This uh, event occurred, like I said, 13 months ago, last June 2024. There was rain just about every day throughout the month of June, which culminated for this project with its overtopping, I believe on the 9th of June 24th, 2024. And that was a disaster because it took out, you could see the paving on the other side there where the Rapid and Dam store was located, a local institution serving burgers and pies and it was a cool place to hang out from what I hear. The overtopping and resultant loss of section of the dam released up to 12 million cubic yards of sediment into the downstream reaches of the Blue Earth River and created a lot of environmental damage. It was really devastating and the area really hasn't fully recovered yet. To conceptualize 12 million cubic yards, I always like to use uh, dump trucks, like a 10-yard truck, and that would take over 1 million truckfuls to haul that amount of material away. Now, I've got some folks that help me uh, with suggestions on the channel, and they suggest that next time I try and conceptualize the volume of earth material, I do it in terms of football uh, fields. So to that end, if you take the footprint of a football field, it's 100, year, 100 yards long, 53.3 yards wide, if you stack that material and let's ignore the angle of repose so just had vertical sides it would be over 2,000 yards high or over a mile high within the footprint of the football fields which is an amazing amount of material I mean that's more material than a lot of earth dams are constructed of and I understand that there was contamination in that sediment, which is common, you know, pesticide residue and other things like that, but just the suffocation, if you will, of vegetation downstream by suddenly being covered with sediment was uh, really a disaster. Now, as the time I'm recording this video, it's not clear to me that the county and the state has secured the federal portion of the funding, which would be the lion's share of the funding for this uh, dam removal project. The dam removal, if they get the funding, can start as early as 2027. But of course, the federal government isn't going to pay 100% of the cost. The governor of Minnesota recently announced that he was going to secure $10 million worth of funding to go towards this dam removal project. And ultimately, that wasn't secured in the state budget. So as with Four years ago, when Bar Engineering did a study to look at what would it cost to rehabilitate Rapid Dam or what would it cost to remove it, uh, they put out a cost of around $82 million for dam removal and around $15 million to repair the dam. The dam was in poor condition when it overtopped and failed back in 2024. And what I mean by poor condition, it was no longer generating power due to damage from previous flood events. There was emergency spillway gates that could no longer be opened to discharge water. And there was a lot of uh, dead trees that had accumulated on the upstream face of the dam. All those things led to the inability 
of the dam to effectively and safely discharge the water downstream. So because of that, the reservoir was allowed to overtop or the, the river on the upstream side was allowed to overtop the dam. And the dam wasn't designed for overtopping so that earthen material at the abutment contact between, between the dam and the hill, if you will, uh, was easily eroded. So in the previous videos that I've done, I had people say, well, the dam didn't fail. It was the hillside that failed. Well, it's part of the dam. It's anytime a dam results in catastrophic release of its reservoir, sudden release, uncontrolled release of the reservoir, that's a dam failure. But yes, specifically, it wasn't the dam structure itself that failed, but it was the abutment contact. So between the structure and the contact on that side of the channel uh, with the earthen material. So as I mentioned, Bar Engineering did a study back in 2021, $15 million to restore the condition of the dam to a safe operating condition, or $82 million to remove it. And at the time, there was simply no political will or insufficient political will to get the funding to do that. And as we see here today, they are still apparently struggling to get funding to, to remove this dam, but it clearly needs to be done. And a big part of this project is the stabilization of the left bank slope near vertical, vertical scarp due to erosion on that side of the channel. And of course, it's that erosion that took out the dam store and the house of the owners of the dam store. So as I've pointed out recently with other topics, this project should serve as a cautionary tale. There are thousands of dams like this, 100 plus years in age that are in poor condition that are 100 plus years in age. And there appears to be, in many cases, no money to restore these dams to a safe operating condition. So really they're like a time bomb waiting for the day that there'll some type of a failure that'll occur, resulting in costs that are far in excess of what it would have taken to safely remove the dam or restore it to full operating condition. So the old saying, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. But this is a trend that I've noticed and I haven't figured this out yet, but I think there's a perverse incentive for a lot of local ownership of projects to not do the necessary repair and maintenance for something that's essentially well beyond their budget capability in a normal year. So instead, in the back of their minds, I'm sure they're thinking if the thing fails, the federal government will come in and pay roughly 80% of the associated costs through FEMA and other federal grants. So I think the root cause to problems like what happened here at Rapid and Dam is related to getting better funding mechanisms for these projects and placing a higher priority on avoiding situations like this. As I mentioned again, there's thousands of projects like this throughout the United States. So I'll continue to follow developments on this story. Thanks for watching everyone and please stay tuned for future videos. At this point, I wanna send a shout out to those of you who have contributed to buy me a coffee. That's a great way to support the channel. I also, of course, wanna thank the channel members and those of you who have contributed to Super Thanks. Those are additional mechanisms for supporting the channel, which I really appreciate.